So would you recommend someone watching right now, if they've never had that experience, mm -hmm. to go do that themselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. But what if they're saying, well, David, I, I can't. Like, I mean, what do you mean? You want me to go down to the Rolls Royce? I mean, yeah. they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. Of course they are. I don't even are. know how to get there. Google. <laughs> hey, Matt, you a fool for this one? While we're building these businesses and building these dreams and manifesting all our desires, stress and anxiety is a part of that. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is the definition of love? I have been an adult since I was 16. I definitely feel like I've transitioned into a better place mentally. And another part of self-care, um, self-pleasure, orgasms, they're healing. So Absolutely. that part is important. No cap, we a o about to get a play o pull up to the table, let's go. Everybody wants to be wealthy. Everybody wants the, the fame. Everybody wants, um, uh, some people, the bags, Louis, the Gucci, but nobody really wants to work, right? Nobody really wants to put in the effort to actually put in the work to build the wealth. And when you think about building wealth, a lot of it is practical, but the majority of it is mental. What are you thinking mentally? What have you learned mentally? What are you putting inside your brain that comes into your heart, that comes out of with your actions? And man, um, about two years ago, I put on my Instagram, I was like, yo, who should I have on my show? And a lot of y'all started tagging people, started tagging people, started tagging people. And man, one of my good friends, man, uh, Michelle Williams, uh, she tagged this one guy. I was like, I've heard of him. But I never really followed him. I ain't gonna lie to nobody. I never really followed him. But then she tagged him. And then I saw that my, one of my spiritual mentors, Pastor Darius Daniels, he follows him. I was like, oh, he gotta be legit. If Double D followed this guy, he's legit. And so when I started following him, this dude, like, his swag is gonna be on point, ladies. I'll let y'all ask that question when y'all see him. <laughs> y'all can ask him that. I'm, I'm a grown man. I don't need to ask him that. Um, he, he loves people. He loves people. And one thing that I, I, you, you definitely will see that he makes good money. But one thing I love about him is everyone who's connected to him, loves him, honors him, and also make good money. And I was like, yo, I need to get connected to this guy. And, and we talked maybe about two months later, connected. He brought me to his conference, allowed me to speak on his stage. Um, and this guy is, is amazing. Um, I got to meet his mom. I see where, where he comes from. He's just a strong stock. It's a strong stock period. But before we get to my friend and good, uh, and, and he's become a friend, a mentor. I've called him when I was in my transition season and this man dropped so much knowledge into me. And so his name is David. I'm not gonna pronounce his last name just yet. I'm gonna let him say it correctly because I always mess it up every time I say it. But before we get to my brother real quick, man, hit the subscribe button and make sure y'all hit the thumbs up. You're gonna enjoy today's show. So if you're watching this on podcast, yo, listen, subscribe, share this with a friend. Today's show is going to give you some wisdom, it's going to give you some knowledge, and you're going to leave inspired to go and do the things you have to do so you can become wealthy. But one of the things to building true and lasting wealth is really uh, life insurance. My friends over at Ethos, man, um, have partnered with me to make sure that we, in a minority culture, when we do pass, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When we do pass, we have life insurance in place to leave to our loved ones, to leave to our kids, to leave to our family members, so we can give them a head start, especially our kids. We give them a head start to start building generational wealth. And I wanna make sure that I equip you with the tools necessary to do just that. Because the majority of y'all watching right now, yeah, y'all wanna start a business, but you do not wanna think about how do you take care of your loved ones when you leave. And I get it. Trust me, it, it, it was hard for me to do it. But you can go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash ethos. That's anthonyoneal.com forward slash ethos. It will take you 12 minutes to complete this form. You can get a million dollar policy today for like 50, 60 bucks. It's a term life insurance policy. You, no blood tests, no medical background. They're gonna take you for your word. And you're gonna have a policy today that if something happened to you next week, your kids, your wife, your husband, your family are taken care of. That's huge, especially within the black community. Only 18% of black people actually have life insurance, the correct amount in place. But we're gonna stop that here at the table within my family. But I'm gonna I'm come down just a little bit, CJ.
because I'm about to be chilling. I want y'all to get your pen, get your paper, because when this man talks, um, he's going to bring some wisdom. Uh, so, y'all, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the table for the first time. Definitely not the last time, uh, because later on throughout this year, we're going to bring him back on here to give us some more wisdom on how we can make some more money. But right now, let's get this wisdom and knowledge from my friend David. David Imont Imontier. <laughs> <laughs> David you know, Montier. I was I was so believing in you. Dude, I you, it is I, you know what? I believe in you. Go, go ahead. David. You can do it. E, e, you right there? You got it? E Monitier? You got it. There it is. There, 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 there. Yeah. David E Monitier. You got it. Now you say it. It's, it sounds better. David E Monitier. David E Monitier. Yeah. E Monitier. What is what is what is that, Coach Amanda? My um, my origin is, is Nigerian. Nigerian. Yeah. Okay, okay. How long have you been in the States? Well, we moved here when I was 10. Okay. 10 years okay. old, yeah. But I was born here. I was born in the U.S. For real? But about six weeks old, we moved back to Nigeria. My dad oh. played professional tennis in Nigeria for many years, so. Wait, don't you play tennis? I do. Are you good? I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> played in college. I had a scholarship. You college. did? Yeah. So you okay. ain't okay. You good? Then if well, you got a scholarship. Not, I, went, I went to pro. My my dad is sixty eight. He can mm -hmm. still beat me today. He's that good. So does he still play on a regular? He coaches a little bit here and there. Here and there, okay, okay, yeah. okay. He stay here in the states or mm -hmm. he back in? The, okay. Yeah, he's in Houston. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. But let's let's get to it, man. Yeah. One of the things I really like about you, right, is you are, and and I hate to say it like this because I well I love to say it, but I don't want to offend nobody. But you're black, and you're wealthy, successful, and you love people, and you're making other people successful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, from my little bit of research and correct me if I'm wrong, please, within your business structure, you've you've sold over billions of dollars worth of products. Oh, yeah. And I've and met. Services. Can I say what? And services. And services. Yeah. And recently at your conference, I was actually <laughs> I was sitting next to I won't say his name on the stage. You can say it, but I won't say it because I want you know, just put people business out there. Um, I was I was at your dinner. And I was sitting there, I said, this guy, just chilling, having a good time. I said, what you do? He said, man, I, you know, I work with him. I said, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, great. And he was like, yeah, I'm about to go, you know, jump on the jet. I got to speak somewhere and come back tomorrow. I said, jump on the jet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But And he's doing close to a million dollars a month. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what in the world? Like, everyone around you is wealthy, successful, and if they're not at that level yet, they're going there. Mm. What made you want to love people? I'm curious. Because you well, love people. Well, I think it's one of the commandments. It's one of the commandments that supersedes all other commandments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Love God and, and to love people. Yeah, yeah. So I think for me, it, it's, it's really born out of understanding the pain and the struggles that I had okay. growing up and in business when I first started. Okay. And wanting to see other people succeed, not wanting them to live a life of doubt and unbelief and worry and anxiety. Yeah. And there were some tools and strategies and techniques that I've learned yeah. that al have allowed me to be able to live the life that I want to live. So yeah. it's really, really rewarding when you can give that knowledge to someone else and they take it and they go on and create the lifestyle that they want. So let's, let's rewind. Today, you're, you know, you're, let's just be real. You're a multimillionaire. And, but let's go back to when you weren't. Mm. Well, what was your what was your foundation? Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Growing up, let's uh, let's let's not go down to your childhood. Let's go to your beginning stages. When did when did you identify that you want to build wealth? And what was the starting process? And what lessons did you learn in that starting process uh, to to get to where you are today? Yeah. You know, it's a, it's impossible to to go and start there without actually going to the very beginning. Okay, okay. because what you're exposed to as a child, a lot of times make, makes a huge difference in your life. Yeah. And one of the things my mother always did, even though we were living in Nigeria, she always brought us to, whether it was England, or brought us to the US. Wow. So this desire for more was already really inundated in me from a kid. Yeah. And then it was basketball. I wanted to make it to the NBA. I fell in love with Michael Jordan, and that was my goal. My goal was I was gonna make it in the pros. Well, that dream was shattered right around 12. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> so it was, that wasn't going to be the route that I was going to take. Went on to college, dropped out of school, didn't finish. But then I got introduced to direct sales, got introduced to entrepreneurship. Okay. And that's where the love and, and the drive for success was really honed because now I was exposed to people mm. that looked like me. They were making you know $30,000 a month. And I was like, 
yeah, yeah. wait a minute. Back then, you know, I was like, 30, uh, wait, that's what people make a year. And that's a good job. Right. And you're telling me you're making that per month. Right. And I just, I said, okay, whatever it is you tell me to do, as long as it's legal and morally right, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. And that was, that was my start. At 21 years old, I started. And I'll be 39 in July. So it's been, it's been about 18 years now. 18 years. Yeah, on this journey. What was I thinking at 21? I was I, I wasn't thinking about making no I was thinking about making money, but I wasn't thinking about making money. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get out of debt. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get back on my feet. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make sure I don't go back to suicidal thoughts wow. at 21. Mm -hmm. And bro, like this this is this is solid. Like this, this is really solid. What what was the secret ingredients to you building your success today? Yeah. Um, you know, funny thing is that they're, they're really not secrets. I was about to say that. Yeah, they're not secrets. I mean, we call them that because it sounds really good, but, right. but they're really not. My, my journey, like I said, starting at 21, it starts with your environment. Yeah. The environment, you hear it all the time, you're a product of your environment. But your belief systems are fortified by your environment. Yeah. I was able to move out of an environment where it was lack it was scarcity, yeah. it was fear. I was able to move into an environment that was about building wealth, yeah, about yeah. success. Okay. And then I was exposed to the right people. So it's environment, then it's associations. Ooh. Who are the people that are in your life that are inspiring you, that are motivating you, encouraging you, that are examples of what can be? Yeah. That is so vital yeah. to life. And then those individuals introduce you to information. Yeah. See, the fact that you know your listeners and the people that follow you they're exposed to who you are as a person. So they're associated with you. But now what you're doing is so powerful because you're giving them information that they can now take that transforms their minds in form. Mm -hmm. It goes in, it forms, right? And then action, that's action. It goes in and starts to form, starts to take action on what I what it is that I heard. Yeah. And that's what happened for me. I started to get the right information, thinking grow rich and magic of believing, science of getting rich and yeah. leadership books and started to study, started to listen. And then now my mind started to be renewed. My my whole being started to be transformed. And then the results came in. Yeah. Right? So, because what happens is this, and this is big. When you move from being in the wrong environment to the right environment, uh -huh. and you start surrounding yourself with the right people, you start getting the right information, okay. the last key is the experiences. Experiences make the biggest, biggest impact on your belief system. Because I don't... You never believe what you haven't experienced. What's your favorite food? Ribs. Ribs. Why? Tastes good. Because you experienced it. Mm. If you never experienced it, it couldn't be your it favorite. It could be my favorite. And people don't experience the life that they want. Why? Because they open their mouth and they say, I can't afford it. So why go to the dealership? Why go to the multi-million dollar home? Why surround yourself with the right people when you're thinking, I can't afford it? So now, when you open your mouth, creation starts. So you never go there. I tell people all the time, before you get there, you got to go there. Mm -hmm. So I would do this broke. I would go to the most expensive hotels. I would mm -hmm. go shopping without buying anything. Mm -hmm. Most expensive <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, stores and expensive restaurants. And I would do that. So I was getting the experience, experience. the emotional connection to the life that I wanted. Yeah. And then I would go back to work. Go back to work. Yeah. To go get it. To go get what I experienced. Right. Now I had the drive to go get it because I experienced it. So would you recommend someone watching right now, if they've never had that experience, mm -hmm. to go do that themselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. But what if they're saying, well, David, I, I can't. Like, I mean, what do you mean? You want me to go down to the Rolls Royce? I yeah. mean, they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. Of course they are. I don't even are. know how to get there. Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put it in your, put it in your GPS. Uh, bro. Yeah. You know, yeah, they are going to look at you crazy. They, they did are. that to me. Uh, they did it to me. Yeah. Yo, they did it to me. <laughs> Man, true story. The this man right here, <laughs> this man right here is the reason why I'm driving the car that I'm driving. <laughs> I made a post. What was the post about? Do you remember? Uh, I don't. I don't remember. But I, I think I. I think I sent you a message. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, David don't play, y'all. He don't play. I I posted something. He was like, bro, listen, you make good money. It is okay. It's okay. Enjoy. Yeah. Go, go spend a little something, something. <laughs> and the next day, 
I went and bought my dream car. Mm-hmm. The next day, and sent him a picture. He said, that's good. I got two of them. <laughs> You gotta keep dreaming. You gotta keep dreaming. Now, what's the purpose of dreaming if you're not gonna live the dream? Think about it. You, you have this dream car, and you do all this work. And I know this is, you know, yeah. But you, I know what you teach, no, right? Yeah, no, but you teach but good. There's, a, there's, there's a balance to it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? It's mm-hmm. not doing anything stupid with your money, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it is rewarding yourself for the work that you've actually done. Yeah. And you know, people talk about materialism. Materialism really starts where people can't afford it. Oh, explain that though. Yeah. I mean, so you're saying so, you got the money. Yeah. So like people say you're materialistic because you have you have Rolls Royces or you have Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Well, it's because they can't afford it. That's why they call it materialism. There are people right now in Africa, right, that have no shoes. And people all around the world, kids that have no shoes. Right, right. How many pairs of shoes do you have? Tons. Right. So they could look at you and say you're materialistic. Oh, Right? So wealth is relative. What you have is relative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy that has two Rolls Royces thinks he's doing pretty well. Right. You go to Dubai, they have 12 <laughs> of the same kind. Same kind. Same color. <laughs> and yeah. then their license, watch this, their license plates cost more than the car. What? Yeah. In Dubai? In Dubai, yes. They have million dollar license plates. Like if it's a single number, right. it's over a million dollars. Like if your license plate is one or two or three or right. five, yeah. That's a million dollar license plate. Yeah, easy. Yeah. So, I'm, what are we talking about here? <laughs> you know, people say, okay, don't buy the. Yeah, you know, I love it when people do that. Just don't buy the cars, that, but they have a private jet. Ooh. Or they have a t shirt on, shorts, yeah, yeah. but their watch is. 500,000. Right. <laughs> or a million. Right? Yeah, or a million. Yeah. yeah. So, million. you gotta be smart about it. But, and let and, me and backtrack, because that's, that's way ahead. Right. They're. There are goals that you have to set. You know, when I first started this journey, my goal was ten grand a month. That's what I wanted. That's every entrepreneur that should be your first goal, I think. Because most jobs don't pay ten grand a month. Absolutely. So you want to? That's your first goal. Yeah. And then I grew it to thirty. Okay. Then it was a hundred. Okay. Right. Then it you know just it kept, kept going me. from there. But there's it. a formula on how to actually accomplish your goal. Oh, talk talk yeah. that through. There is a formula. There is a way to do it. What's that formula? It's a three step process. Okay. But you have to understand what success means for you. I heard Earl Nightingale actually say this in The Stranger's Secret. He said that success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Okay. So meaning that success is about growth. Yes. It's not really about the destination. Right. And because success is a moving target. Like today, you're watching this, you're thinking, man, if I can get to 100 grand a month, I've made it. Right. I promise you, when you get there, you're going to want two. Absolutely. And when you get two, you're going to want five. Absolutely. So it's a moving target. So it's not about actually hitting the goal. Yeah. It's about developing who you are, developing the mindset that can believe for that. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. All right. So once you understand that and understand where, you, where it is that you are, now it's about desire. Okay. Desire is the starting point of all achievement. If I can learn how to cultivate my desire for what it is that I want, what it is that I truly, truly want, it is going to come into my life by default. Mm. Desire, being the starting point of all achievement, the key is to know how do I cultivate it, and you do it through your senses, yeah. your five senses. Right. I think that's what you were asking me about yesterday, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or today, today actually. Yeah, yeah. Your five senses, your ability to see, hear, yes. taste, touch, smell. So my desire, let's so say your desire is 10 grand a month, yeah, right. okay? Do you see it every day? Yeah, yeah. come on, okay. come on. Do that's you hear it. it every day? Yep. Do you touch it? Every day. So what do you mean by that? Well, when I started this journey, I took a dollar bill, changed it to a hundred thousand, and I put it on my bathroom sink. So every morning, you I it. had to, I had to see, I had to touch what a hundred thousand. My subconscious mind doesn't know what's real, what's not, All right? And I wasn't seeing the broke person in the mirror anymore. Ooh. I was seeing the person that was making a hundred thousand dollars a year. In six months, it happened. I went all of almost five years, Anthony, without making six figures combined. When I learned what I'm teaching you guys right now. Six months went to six figures. Wow. Desire. Touch. What do you mean by touch? Okay, well, someone who makes 10 grand a month, where did they have dinner? Yeah. You know? And that place smells a little different from Chili's. It sure does. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't gonna knock Chili's though. No, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't had I, Chili's. Haven't had Chili's. I haven't had Chili's since 2008. Since 2008? I had food poisoning. 
Oh, so you ain't knocking it because... Yeah, it's just my... It's just not your thing. Oh, my God. I haven't had it since, like, 2000 and, like, probably, like, 8 or 10 as well. Yeah, yeah. See, because your taste buds have changed. You're not accustomed to sitting no, in, in, in the chilies. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. But you know what, though? I've learned... It's just... That's just not where I'm at anymore. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And here's the thing. If that's where you are right now, that's fine. Totally. But it doesn't mean that you stay there. So what I recommend you do is go to a five-star restaurant. Yeah. Maybe you can't afford what's on the menu. Fine. They're not going to kick you out. Just go there, drink. get dressed, get a drink. Yeah. Sit there. Right. And when you go back to Chili's, you're going to realize, I don't belong in Chili's. It's called a comfort zone. See, like right now, you're driving a pretty nice car, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really nice car. Really nice. Get back in a Ford Focus. I can't do it. You can't. I mean, no, no, no. I can, but I, I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. I can't do no, it. No, no, no. You can't. You actually can't. Your body, you will feel so uncomfortable. I like people would feel a little weird. Watch this. Uber black versus regular Uber. Uber black. Uber black. Why? Why would you get into regular Uber? Because I've been exposed to the black. <laughs> exactly. It's almost like when I started flying first class, I, man, I, I get a little disappointed. Exactly, but I don't want to. I don't want us to sound like we don't. No. We don't understand. No, we do understand. <laughs> we understand both because I've flown in right. the back of the plane. Right, right, right. But I didn't want to stay at the back of the plane. I, I and that's what I'm saying. It, is it okay to fly back? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You're gonna get there at the same time. I'm gonna get there. Yeah. Right. 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 But if we're talking about building this mindset, because remember, so a mind that's been stretched at a certain point can never go back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. And. I mean, I think it was Paul that said, I've learned to abound and I've learned to abase. Yeah. So, yes, if it is necessary for me to do that, of course I could do it. Yeah. But my comfort zone is mm, different. It is. Because of what I've experienced. And that's what I'm. That's what we're teaching people right now. Yeah. That if you want more out of life, you've got to prepare for more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to expand. Yeah. God is only going to give you what you're prepared for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not prepared for more, he can't give it to you. He can't. According to your faith. You're right. May it be done unto you. Come on, man. So what are you learning? Right. What are you? What are you listening to? What are you hearing every single day? Because that's what's developing your faith. Right. You know. So let me ask you this question. Um, speaking a lot, right along what you said, right? I think maybe about like two, three years ago, I probably would have did a reaction video to this and said, "This is the dumbest thing a rich person could have done." Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it was Rick Ross bought his daughter a Lamborghini SUV for her first car. Yeah. And when I saw that, I was reading the comments. I was like, oh, man, you're spoiling her. You're not giving her wisdom. You're not letting. You're not making her go earn it, and you're mm -hmm. not making her live the rough life. And then <laughs> I was reading some of the other comments like, yo, but that's why he worked hard, so she doesn't have to work as hard. But she mm -hmm. could work hard moving forward, Yeah. but she doesn't have to work as hard. And it's like, man, when I was sitting back thinking, I was like, do I want my kids do I want to expose my kids to my struggle or do I want to expose expose my kids to a different type of life mm. and then let them struggle in that life? Yeah. Yeah. New kid, well you got you have you have you have, you have daughters. Mm. They turn 20, they say, "Dad, I want a Lamborghini." Mm. And you want the and you got the money. Mm. Are you buying them the Lamborghini for their first car? My daughter, uh she's 18 now, right? So when right. she turned 16, okay. I did get her a car. It wasn't a Lamborghini. It was a BMW. I think it was an X3 or something like that. What is a BMW? Yeah. <laughs> um, so here's, here's my philosophy on that. When she was about 12, mm -hmm. 13, because of what she was exposed to right. on her, with me being her father, she wanted a nice car. Mm -hmm. And she would talk about it. And one of the cars she wanted was a, was a BMW. It was a BMW or Benz. Okay. Now, she knew that dad had... The money to get her the car. Right. She knew it. One thousand percent. He can do it. Right. And I made a promise. I said, "Listen, you get straight A's. Mm -hmm. Right. You'll you'll have the BMW or the Benz, whatever it is, is going to be when you turn sixteen. She never had to ask me again, because she knew and she trusted that her father had what it took to give her what it is that she wanted. Why am I sharing that with you? Well. I always look at things from a spiritual standpoint first before I look at it from a physical standpoint. I'm her physical father, mm -hmm. but she also has a spiritual father. Mm -hmm. And a spiritual father owns everything. everything. Yeah, yeah. So I have a spiritual father. You have a spiritual father. Right. People that are watching, they have a spiritual father. Your right. father owns everything. Right. He owns all the wealth. Right. So it's what do you want mm. is what he's going to give you. Mm. 
If it's if it's a Ford Focus, that's what he's going to give you. Mm -hmm. If it's a Lamborghini, that's what he's going to give you. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on what you're actually desiring. Mm -hmm. What the actual number is, it's small. I remember Joel Osteen talking about this. He was contemplating buying this house, mm -hmm. and he was worried about what people were going to say. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you buying this house? You're past it. Da, da, da. And he said he was on the plane, and he said God told him to look down and said, how small are the objects down there to you? The houses that you see, the cars that you see driving, how small are they to you from this point of view? And he said, very small. So how much smaller is that house that you want to buy to me? Mm. So whose perspective are you looking at life? You're looking at the perspective of Rick Ross buying his daughter Lamborghini, like, oh my God, why would you do that? But to God, it's like, that's Lamborghini. It's a Lamborghini. So it's what? It's just a car. It's just a car. Wow. Yeah. My daughter works very, very hard. She does. Yeah. When she graduates from college, yes, I plan on shocking her. Mm -hmm. What that shock is going to be, I don't know. I know. But there's always going to be a reward. There's always a reward for doing what you're supposed to do. That's how God works. Mm -hmm. That's how a father works. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, I'm just going to give it to you just to give it to you. There's a reward for you doing what you're supposed to do. And that's that's how I operate with my, my daughter and my son. That's how I feel too, man. Yeah. Whenever I'm blessed to have kids... Um, if I ever have kids, um, you know, my thing is I just want to be able to expose my family to things that I was not exposed to. Yeah. And I do that now. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why um, I bought my car. You have a much, I don't say much better, but it's definitely a step up for my car. And you don't know how much you exposed me when I got in your car. Mm -hmm. We, I listened to you and I was just like, just moving my, my butt in the seat. I was like, yeah, this is... <laughs> This is nice. I'm looking around. I mean, because I was like, man, okay, this is what's next down the road. Yeah, of course. You know, and, and then leaving that conference, I literally printed off that card. Yes. And it's in my office. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, all right, all right, that's that's goals. Yeah. That's goals. Because the car I have now was that was goals. Yeah. And then I get there, it's like, okay, I don't know what's next. Maybe the jet. I don't know. You know, but it works for anything. It does. It works for any area of your life. Yeah. It works for everything. It's you know, Abraham, he wanted a son. Yeah. And he was having trouble. But he wasn't having trouble with his faith. He was yeah. having trouble with his belief. Yeah. Because he was looking at his current circumstances. Current circumstances said, I'm too old. My wife is too old. Yeah. So the facts said, I'm not supposed to have a son. So God had to have him look at a different picture, mm -hmm. look up at the stars and imagine a child's face on every star. That's what I want to do for you. And when he did that, that's when he believed. That's why I tell people, put the picture there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now, for you, it may be a Mercedes right now. Right. But you go from faith to faith. Faith to faith. Yeah. Also, all day. What about the people watching right now? Because I think this is what a lot of people have, right? It's, I don't believe I deserve that. Mm. I don't believe I can get there. Yeah. My mama didn't get there. My dad didn't get there. I don't see no one in my family getting there. We all just work at, you know, McDonald's, Wendy's, you know, the these shops. The most we'll make is about fifteen to twenty dollars an hour yeah. for the rest of our life. I, yeah. That's not for me. Yeah. Maybe that's for you, but that's not for me. And I just, I talk about this all the time on my show. You know, you got to believe in yourself further, and sometimes you got to believe in what your parents and your family don't even believe in. Right. What would you say to someone, because you, you talk about this often, Ashley. I actually learned a lot from you when, when you talk about believing in faith. But what would you say to that person? If they came to you and your company right now and said, David, I just I don't believe I could be as successful as you. Mm -hmm. My question to them is, are you happy with that? Ooh. No, I'm not happy with that. Okay, well, let's change it. Well, how do I change it, though? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not you. I'm not, I'm not okay. where you are. Okay. Yeah, you're not where I am. And, and, and that's okay. But if you keep saying it, that's exactly what you're going to keep getting. Mm. We were created in the image and the likeness of, of God. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing that God always does. Mm -hmm. He speaks. And when he speaks, he creates. Mm -hmm. And he's given us that same power. So when you say, I can't afford that, and this is what my family's always done, and I don't believe I can be successful, you're actually using the power of creation. You're just creating what you don't want. That's why I'm saying, what do you want? Are you happy with that? Yeah. You say, I'm not happy. Well, let's change it. What are we changing? We're changing what we're speaking first. Yeah. So I have a mantra that I've taught, and I learned it from Bob Proctor. Um, he's, he's incredible, right? He, he passed away a few, few months ago. Yeah. 
uh, at 88. Wow. I mean, just a life of impact. But he taught me this phrase, I'm so happy and grateful now that I am. Mm. Anything you put after I am goes into creation mode. Mm. So if you do want to change the generational curse, what's a curse? A curse is a set of words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the words that you've been speaking, that your parents are speaking, your grandparents are speaking. That's the generational curse. How do you break a curse with a new set of words? Mm. Yeah. That's it. That's how you break a curse. Yeah. Right? That's how you break a spell. Mm -hmm. Spell, S-P-E-L-L. -L. What do you do with words? You spell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So it's what's coming out of your mouth first is what you change. Right. If you're making $15 an hour right now, are you happy with that? No. I want to make $100,000. Great. Get out a pen and paper. Write the vision. I'm so happy and grateful now that I earn $10,000 a month by December 31st, 2022. You have no idea how it's going to happen. I know you don't. Right. You're not supposed to know how because if you knew how, you'd have done it already. Right, right. But you know who knows how? God. Your reticular activating system knows how. Your mind knows how. And when you give the mind a direction, it will go and find the right people, the right situations, the right events for you to get to where it is that you want to go. Mm. Your mind is the GPS, mm. but you're giving it the wrong address. Mm. You're giving it $15 a month, $15 an hour, whatever that is, mm. that address. And it's saying, okay, good, I'll, get, I'll take you there. Mm. Give it a different address, 10 grand a month, 100 grand a month, a million a month, a million a day. Mm. Give it that address and watch how the right people will come into your life, the wrong people will leave your life, right opportunities, you'll get phone calls. Like, oh, it's, it's called the magic of believing. So it starts with what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and then it goes to what am I seeing. Mm. So I write the vision, make it plain, so who sees it will run. So you can only run in the direction you see. Mm -hmm. So if all I'm seeing is lack, I'm running towards that direction. So I've got to start seeing abundance. Yeah. i got to start seeing wealth. Yeah. And I know it's hard in the very beginning, but it's a habit. You've had the habit of looking at things the wrong way. Mm -hmm. I'm saying let's look at it now the right way mm -hmm. and create that habit. And what happens is when you speak it and you see it long enough, you're going to start developing the emotions. And the two emotions you've got to develop is one of love and gratitude. Yep, I got you. All right. Okay. So... I am grateful for it now. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't have it, I'm grateful for it. Mm -hmm. After I get it, I then show gratitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, gratefulness and gratitude are two totally different things. Bro. <laughs> he teaching. You teach it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Grateful is what you do before you get it. Yeah, yeah. Gratitude is showing after you get it. After you get it. Yeah. That's why it says... <laughs> What's everything is you desire when you pray, open your mouth, believe, seeing, mm -hmm. that you receive it. Receiving is a soulless transaction. Okay. Receiving is not physical. Yeah. Like if I called you and said, hey, Anthony, I'm, I'm going to send you a million dollars to your foundation. What are you going to tell me? Thank you. So Thank much. you. You just received it. Yeah. Have you gotten the million? No. No. But you received it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you shall have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the check shows up. Now you have it. Oh. That's how it works. <laughs> Whatever you want, any design, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So if it's a hundred grand you want, great. If it's a hundred grand a day you want, great. If it's a hundred grand a week, and I'm not like this is not like hocus. I'm I've done this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, done it, it several it, it several times. Yes, million dollar days. Million dollar days. Yes, several times. I know about the million dollar months. I didn't know you had million days. dollar days. Days, several. Yeah. And it didn't happen until I started to write it down uh -huh. and I put signs. He said he would confirm his word with signs. Signs. And then the wonders. Yeah. 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 My pastor always he's always say miracles, signs, and wonders. That's his, that's what he prays for. Miracles, mm -hmm. signs, and wonders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's on had a million dollar days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I haven't done There are it. people that have had billion dollar days. So it's all relative. Yeah. It's, it's what do you want? What is, what is the desire that God has put in your heart? Mm -hmm. And it will grow. It will grow and it will grow and it will grow. And it gives you the capacity to give more. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we give multiple seven figures. Yeah. yeah. Every year. Y'all yeah, just gave a large check to one of my friends, Dr. Aresha, in mm -hmm. uh, the church over yeah. there in Houston. Yeah. We fed two... Hundred women, single mothers, every month we gave them groceries for one year. 
for one year. One year. Yeah. So you're not just making the money, you're generous with oh, the money. Oh, you have to be. You have to be. John taught me that. I was already doing it before he taught me this, but he kind of put it in the right um, perspective, John Maxwell. He said, you have to have stabilizers in your life. Okay. And he said, the stabilizer for money is generosity. Yeah. The stabilizer for power is accountability. If you have a lot of power with no accountability, it'll destroy you. If you have a lot of money without no generosity, it'll destroy you. Do you think being generous helps you make more money? Absolutely. Why, when you're giving it away? I'm curious. From your, it's a opinion. spiritual law. Exactly. That whatever you give, right, mm -hmm. it comes back to you. Mm -hmm. You only get to keep what you give. <laughs> See, if you don't give it, it owns you. Yep. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep, makes sense to me. And whatever is in your hand mm -hmm. is the harvest. Mm -hmm. But once you let it go, it becomes seed. Yep. Seed is always smaller than the harvest. So if a million dollars is your harvest and you hold on to it, right, mm -hmm. that's your harvest. But the moment I plant the million, mm -hmm. now it becomes a seed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it has to reap something bigger than the seed. Bigger than a million dollars. There you go. Which is one of the main reasons why I'm, I'm always telling people you have to tithe. And I actually tithe more than 10%. Of course. Because it's like, I don't want to give God the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. I want God to know that he could trust me with the 90. But I'm like, yo, I want, I want this 90 to be bigger. Yeah. And so I'll give you 20 so I can get a bigger 90. Absolutely. And I, I really do believe that's one of the main reasons why, since, since I've stepped out on my own. Congratulations, too, by the way. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's you big. Know, uh, it's, it was scary. Mm -hmm. you know. But, that's when you know it's God. Yes. Yeah. And I, you have to lean on him. I have to. Yeah. You convicted me. I haven't written down Million Dollar Days yet, mm -hmm. but I will be doing that after this show. Because I've had, I've had $100,000 days, mm -hmm. but I have not had Million Dollar yeah. Days. I you'll have, have, you'll have that money. this year for sure. Let's say it one more time. You'll have that this year. <laughs> <laughs> With the hoodie on. Yes, uh, you know. I don't do the jackets. Y'all know oh. me. <laughs> leave that to me. Hey, man, I'll leave that to him. I, I said, hey, bro, you know, I'm going to be in a hoodie. He was like, okay, that, that's what y'all young people do. Go ahead. Do that. <laughs> My man said, I'm going to put it on a suit. You know what I'm saying? I, I make a million dollars a day some days. You know? I was putting on suits, but I was, can't spell a million. So... <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing changed. <laughs> Someone who is drowning in debt, living mm -hmm. paycheck to paycheck, yeah. they're watching this show saying, yo, y'all talking about million dollar days, million dollar months, million dollar years. Mm -hmm. I just want to have, I just want to get out of the life that, I, that, mm -hmm. I, that I'm in right now. Yeah. Um, I think we've given them a lot of wisdom. I think we've given them a lot of, you know, things that they have to start saying. Mm -hmm. But what is the very first step? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I never focused on the debt. You never did? I never did. What did you focus on? The solution. And what's the solution? Yeah. So if you have debt, mm -hmm. focusing on the debt doesn't allow you to pay it off. Like, if I sit there and I complain about the debt, talk about the debt, 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 mm -hmm. I'm giving that address to my mind to create more debt. I like. Okay. okay. All right? I see where you're going. So what I've got to do is, okay, what is the solution? And the solution is I have to make more money. Yep. Because that's what takes care of the debt, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, more yeah. money. Yep. So what avenues? Mm. And the avenues are going to come through people. Who do I need to be connected to? Mm. What field? What am I passionate about? What am I, what am I going to put my hands to that will allow me to give value to the world? Money mm -hmm. is about the exchange of value. Yep. That's all it is. Yep. If I have something that people want, they will pay me for it. Yeah. Is it a product that I can sell? Is it a service that I can sell? Is it a skill set that I have that I can sell? And I'm going to focus my energy on honing my skill and mastering that, learning from someone like you, learning from a coach and a mentor, so I can expand and grow where I'm not thinking about that. I'm not think, not, I'm, uh, I'm thinking about the solution. And the solution brings about what it is that I want and pay off the debt. I had debt, but I didn't pay attention to it. I had debt coming out of college, but I didn't pay attention to it. I focused on the solution. Right. And when I focused on, because whatever you focus on expands, yep. the income expanded. Oh, debt was taken here, debt. take that. No and, problem. One time. Right, right, right. Right? I like that. Versus, now, you have courses and things that you show people how to pay off their debt and all that. But at the end of the day, they still got to generate. Still got to generate income. They got to generate income. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right? true. And I would hate for you to, okay, you got a job. 
You pay off your debt using your job. Okay, now you're debt free, but you ain't got no money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm debt free, but you ain't got no money. <laughs> Hey, let's let's take a trip. No, nobody. <laughs> I'm there free. I get it. I'm happy for you. We'll celebrate it, but let's focus on expansion, growth. And there has to be that balance. So yeah. you're right. You're right. I like that philosophy. Focus on the solution. The solution will take care of not just the debt problem. We'll take care of a lot of your problems. Because if you if you <clears throat> I don't want to go there because I'm not married. But, I mean, that's the one, number one reason for divorces right now is mm-hmm. money. So yeah. maybe you need to focus more on, you know, getting more money and taking care of your spouse. But at the same time, like, okay, let me just be the man, the provider, get in some money, da-da-da, and fix it. Now, things. don't get in more debt. Absolutely. Don't do stupid stuff to get well, we more debt. No. We know that. Yeah, that's common sense. They know that. The so- <laughs> right. You no, know, you, uh, yeah. you would think. Right. <laughs> Focus on the solution of how to create the life that you want. Yes. And that life that you want is a life of debt free. Now, you're, you, you've you been in the entrepreneurship space a, a lot longer than me. And and I honor people who, who are generals in this space, right? But since I've been in this space solely on my 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 own, I couldn't go back to having a job. Mm-hmm. And I've learned so much, like when it comes to taxes, I've learned what the rich people are doing with taxes. I've learned mm-hmm. that um, what what are we thinking? Like, there's nothing wrong if if your calling is to have a job. Okay, cool. I'm not gonna like that. But as an entrepreneur. What is like one major thing you've learned being a black entrepreneur that you think other entrepreneurs need to know? Because you've, I mean, you, you've sold billions, and I, I'm I'm not even near there, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to what I've done. But what is one thing you've learned being a, a minority entrepreneur? I'm not going to be politically correct with my answer. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't see color. You don't see color. I don't. Talk to me. Explain yeah. what you mean. I am a spirit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I live in a body and I possess a soul. Okay. My spirit uh-huh. is not black or white True. or green. True. My spirit is in the image of God. Okay. I like Does that make sense? I love it. So how I see things is I have the ability to create mm. exactly the way God had the ability to create, has the ability to create. Mm. Now... We live in a world where other people do see color. Yeah. And you have to understand that. Right. Right. And I've used that over the years as not necessarily motivation, but I've never looked at it as a disadvantage. Got you. Because I was of a certain color. Yeah. Because my spirit man, that's who God gave dominion to. Right. He gave dominion to the spirit man. My words Mm. have dominion on this earth. Yeah. And I can command what it is that I deserve based on what my faith is. Mm. So as an entrepreneur, as an individual, that's got to be the first thing that you got to look at. Now, do you do things to help the black community? Yes. Do you do you serve as an example to the black community? Absolutely. Right. But internally, you've got to first see yourself as a spirit, as a spirit man. That's so good. Yeah. And when it comes to male and female, you know, a lot of times, you know, women talk about equality and you are equal Mm -hmm. because the male and the female, they were created at the same time. It was the spirit that was created at the same time. The bodies were created at separate times, Mm -hmm. but the spirit of who we are, the dominion, that's why you can, you've had powerful women on the show that have Mm -hmm. created millions of dollars in revenue, millions of dollars of income because it's their mindset. It's the spirit of who they are. Yeah. So if you operate from that standpoint, you won't look at it and say, oh, I'm at a disadvantage because of this or because of that. Even if those disadvantages are there, right, right. there are many examples of people like you yeah. and so many people around the world that are of African descent that have gone on to do incredible things. So I'm never going to use that as an excuse. I'm never going to use it as a disadvantage because I'm a child of God. Yeah. And I am spirit. Yeah. And I have dominion. Yeah. Now, what you see may be a black man, and that's right. fine. But I know who I am on the inside. <laughs> Yo, we're going to end the show right <laughs> there. Because, man, when I was with Ramsey Solutions, I said something similar to that. I didn't say I don't I don't see color. Because I do see color. I just don't acknowledge it and look at it as a, it's a flaw of mine, something mm. like. Or it's a flaw of yours that you're white. Because I'm like, yo, God made you white. 
So who am I to sit here and be upset with you that you're white? Right. Now, how you use your whiteness, how I use my blackness, how we mm -hmm. steward who we are, yeah. that's where I have a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, True. Um, I don't have a problem with white privilege because there are black privileges. And I'm like, yo, how are you stewarding your white privileges? Yeah. That's that's what I look at. Absolutely. You know, because I'm working with Dave Ramsey and he's putting me on stages and platforms that he invited me on to. He used it correctly and well mm -hmm. and i'm like so i can't sit here and be like white people are or black people are i'm like no how are we stewarding mm -hmm. the spirit the opportunities that god has given yeah. us see they're good people and they're bad people absolutely they're good white people right and they're bad white people right. they're good black people and they're bad black people absolutely. so it's the person yeah it's the spirit of who that person is it's the love they have on the inside of them or the hate they have on the inside of them, and and if and if we don't want to be judged, we have to start stop judging. We have to other people as well. And I know that's not. I see what you mean you by know, saying that's not going to be political. Yeah, correct. I get it. I understand. We're we going to have know. some negative comments. Yeah, and that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's your prerogative. When you have a million dollar day, come holler us. <laughs> 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 when you ain't got no debt and you you have a million dollar days and you changing people's lives, come on, lad. It's until the end. No, no, no. no. I, but that's real, though, man. But if people want to learn more about you, because you have some great things coming up later on this year, wh where can they go? How can they learn more about you? Um, BelieveNation.com. Okay. Uh, it's a platform that we created that yeah. is a free platform. It teaches people how to really believe and develop leadership skills as yeah. well to win in any area of life. Yeah. And then... Obviously, my Instagram at David. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ed. It's simple. Man, it's not simple. It you have a unique last it's name. It's a powerful David. African name. Come David on, Monintia. You got it. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Look at that. You say it. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. E mo Nitia. You got it. You gotta say it slow. Yeah. <laughs> so they can follow me on Instagram okay. uh, as well. But um, a lot of great things are happening. Uh, I'm excited yes. about the future, and, and it's that. it's gonna be powerful. No man, yeah. this and congratulations to you. No, bro, really, really proud of you. You I make us proud. It. Appreciate it, man. And uh, you're doing some great things, and no, God will continue to increase you and your yeah. wealth and your wisdom. Appreciate it. And uh, thank God for you. I'm connected. I'm connected to him. You know what I'm saying? Amen. I'm, like, I'm connected to you. Hey, brother, listen. I, I'm, but I'm connected. I'm, I'm connected. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that that's big. I'm literally about to do that. We about to go catch a flight. But I'm like, I'm literally about to write down a million dollar day. Yeah. It's done. So let it be written. So let it be done. So let it be done. And I think y'all should do that, too. Maybe yours is not a million dollar day right now. Maybe yeah. it's say, I need a thousand dollar day. Yeah. I, I need a four thousand dollar month. Yeah. And we just gradually go there. Because, man, you're right. Ever since I stepped into that car, I'm like, man, this is different. Yeah. It's definitely different. And I see what exposure does to people. And when you touch it and you smell it, mm -hmm. and in my case, it's paid for cash. Amen. So it's, it smells and feels <laughs> different. <laughs> I'm like, that smells like cash. <laughs> Yo, we're going to drop my man's David information in the Today Show notes. Thank you all so much for rocking with us, man. Today's show was absolutely amazing. I didn't have any questions for the guy. I just really wanted to flow and introduce you all to an amazing man that you all need to follow. I'm excited about his future. Um, God has his hands on him, and um, I believe he's going to have a $100 million a year. Um, and I'm just mm. excited about it. So we said it here. We'll bring him on here in 12 months from now and see... You know, did, did he surpass the 100 million? Mm. But um, I'm, I'm excited about his future. So check him out. You'll learn a lot of information from this guy. Um, and yo, we'll see you on the next show. Peace out.